We are going to learn a ton today, and we really appreciate our audience being with us. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with SACA, are not familiar with the Smart Automation Certification Alliance, I'm going to do about a 45-second to maybe minute and a half primer. This could go on for an hour. We don't have an hour. I just want to make sure people understand a little bit about the Smart Automation Certification Alliance, which was an organization born by and of industrial employers identifying skills and competencies in industry 4.0. Manufacturing technology is advancing at warp speed. We all know that. And so Jim Wall, who will join us later and his team, worked with industrial employers all over the globe, literally all over the globe, to define competencies in industry 4.0, asking the question, when you hire people, when you promote people in your organization around advanced manufacturing, what is it that you want those people to know? What do you want them to be able to do? And it doesn't matter if you're at the left side of your screen, associate certifications, entry level, advanced manufacturing positions and basic and advanced operations, robot system operations, or IIoT, or moving through the middle where we might be dealing with people in a technician role, all the way to the right, somebody with a degree in engineering as it relates to Industry 4.0. There are a handful of things we've already touched on that make SACA unique. The first big one is that the skills are defined by industrial employers, and we will hear from many of them today. These competencies came from people hiring people today, hiring our students, hiring our incumbent workers, hiring our transitioning workers in manufacturing. That's who defined the competencies covered by the certifications. Secondly, these certifications are incredibly affordable. If a school or company is a member of the Alliance, if for a high school, that's $500 a year for a huge company. That's $3,500 a year, and there's membership levels in between, unlimited certifications for students and employees so that we can identify and certify that an employee, that a student, that anybody who goes through the SACA process has those competencies when they get to the workplace. So that is what SACA is all about. That is what SACA, what makes SACA unique, and we are going to begin now. Uh, walking through with some of the most recognizable brands in the state of Wisconsin, and I would argue some of the most recognizable brands across the globe, as we listen to experts in Industry 4.0, people who have participated on the SACA technical work groups, the people who have defined these competencies, and hear what they have to say about advancing manufacturing technology and making sure that our students, our learners, and our incumbent employees are ready for advanced manufacturing opportunities. My first guest is a great, great friend of mine, a gentleman by the name of Al Doty. You can see from the screen, his title is Advanced Manufacturing Chief Engineer for none other than Harley Davidson Motorcycle Company. Al, it's so great to have you with us. Good to be here. Thank you, Matt. Absolutely. We're really, really excited to have you on board. Many of our attendees, probably most of them, recognize Harley Davidson as a truly iconic brand. Uh, certainly in the world of motorcycles and, and really across all kinds of brands across the globe. It's a company founded in my hometown of Milwaukee in 1903 that's starting to cover some time. And I have a, a question for you, Al. You know, you have served on the, the SACA technical work groups and you've had members of your team from all over the United States do the same. In this world of advanced manufacturing, how do you and how does Harley Davidson see the world of manufacturing changing in the era of Industry 4.0? Absolutely. Um, I guess uh, here, particularly uh, domestically, we continue, you know, we really lean into uh, automation and 4.0 related, related technologies to uh, maintain and extend our competitiveness. It's very important, um, especially being a, a U.S. manufacturer. It's, it's a critical piece of the strategy to uh, ensure, us, ensure U.S. manufacturing stays competitive. Now, what really got my attention with uh, SACA is we try to do that. We also find the skills gap. And uh, you know, my perception is that if you're passionate about uh, uh, SACA, you're, you're passionate about these type of uh, technologies, um, you want to put the effort forward to uh, learn and uh, progress in your career. And, uh, you know, that, that's, the, that's the passion and the people with that type of, uh, of uh, skill set and uh, people that are willing to develop those type of skill sets because it is, it is a lifelong learning endeavor because these technologies change rapidly. It's, it's very important. 
so it's very important to the business. And uh, the other thing is, I think uh, the workforce were, you know, the people that develop these skill sets, they end up, they have options, right? And uh, pay is always one piece of the equation and these skill sets, you know, there's, there's demand for them. And uh, we have a hard time finding them and you need to pay competitively. That's a piece of it, but it's also what, what interests them. So it's kind of one begets the other as we uh, harness emerging, emerging technology to become competitive in, in manufacturing, just to keep quality high and uh, cost low and uh, address safety and all the other issues that, that all manufacturers are trying to address. The more you embrace that, the more it attracts people. Um, you know, I have a quick experience even this, this week, Matt, we do a lot of uh, en engagement surveys and trying to understand what motivates our workforce and, you know, work-life balance, I think is becoming even more important. You know, it's always been important, but I guess compared to when we were younger, I mean, they, they expect it and they expect you to be using best in class technologies uh, to get it. So one particular employee gave me a feedback that they couldn't believe the amount of time it took to get, you know, a certain data set. They were spending about 15 minutes a day and he's explaining to me, all you have to do is this, that, and the other thing you can have in five seconds. And I'm still in the mindset, it would have taken me hours to get that, you know, not very many years ago and I still went to got it. So they, I feel on one hand, we're, we're a little bit behind in embracing it while we're expecting people to get educated in these competencies you need to have you know you need to have the right culture to embrace it and and they want to they want to believe that you're going to help them along the way to get to where they need to be and it's it's i think you know they have higher and higher expectations around this work life balance and and using these emerging technologies to get there that was kind of a little bit of an aha moment for me even this week perfect okay. very 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 timely example al of exactly uh, where Industry 4.0 can improve lives, right? As we look at work-life balance, as we look at opportunities to have students, learners, new employees gain competencies that reduce the time to do certain tasks in manufacturing and certainly automation, certainly advancing manufacturing technology plays a huge, huge role in that. Al, just a great, great uh, example and a great observation. Appreciate you being with us very, very much, Al Doty, Advanced Manufacturing Chief Engineer from Harley-Davidson Motor Company. And next on our list, uh, another great friend of mine, uh, introducing my, my good friend, Scott Tooney. Now, Scott is, as you can see from the screen, he is the president uh, for Plexus, really across uh, all of the Americas. And Scott and I have known each other for a number of years, served on a, a board together for a company that I was actually CEO of, I've, I've, I learned a tremendous amount from Scott, Scott, as a matter of fact, especially as uh, advanced manufacturing and industry 4.0 technologies were starting to cross over with the supply chain. Scott's great to have you on with us. Thanks, Matt. Great to be here. Absolutely. And, and Plexus, for our, our attendees who don't know, is a company that's been around since the late 1970s, 19,000 employees. So this is a big company uh, and they're leaders in design and manufacturing and supply chain and aftermarket services, particularly as it relates to complex electronics products. And that's really the, the genesis of my question, Scott. Um, you know, as we talk about Industry 4.0 technology, your company manufactures some of the most complex electronics products literally on the globe. And not only are you implementing Industry 4.0 manufacturing practices in your business, but you are working with other companies that are doing exactly the same thing. Would be curious from your vantage point, Scott, what trends are you seeing emerge in the world of Industry 4.0 manufacturing? Sure, Matt. So a, a couple of things I'd point out. I think, I think the first trend that, that many people probably are seeing is, and point out is the amount of interoperability. Um, we're seeing a significant increase um, in the level of system integration you know, required across the suite of our manufacturing execution systems. And this is really imperative um, in our pursuit of zero defect culture. You had mentioned some of the products that we, we build, um, you know, class three medical devices that are invasive, um, you know, things that are in aerospace. Um, so we really need to have a zero defect culture. And when we talk of zero defect culture, um, it really is how we, um, 
um, enable our employees and empower them to what we look at is to, you know, accept no defect, make no defect and pass no defect on. So when we look at um, industry 4.0, it really gives us our ability to now control, monitor and adjust the uh, parameters automatically, you know, based on the observed defects or process indicators that we're seeing. So this, this interoperability is obviously coming into play. I would, you know, season that a little bit with what people are seeing is that um, as you connect more machines and have uh, more things um, set up in, in uh, internally with the cloud, the you know support and alignment with IT and your supply base is really critical to limit you know any cybersecurity type issues that may come in into play through um, through those means as far as in a an inroad to your your IT or, or information system. Uh, the second thing I would I would look at is is the amount of robotics and automation that we're seeing. You know this is really key to delivering higher levels of repeatability and enabling our, our talented employees to be utilized elsewhere in the business through reskilling. So leveraging, again, robotics and automation, again, with these uh, connected equipment is a huge lever um, as we drive and pursue operational excellence and how we reduce our transformation costs to stay um, competitive and differentiate. And, the, and then the third thing that, that we're seeing, and this is, is really looking as we get more into system integration is um, a trend towards um, digital twins. Uh, digital twin is a, a virtual representation that serves um, as the, the real-time uh, digital counterpart uh, of a physical object um, or process. So our customers are requiring more information related to the, the pedigree of the manufacturing of the product, creating digital twin um, to collect these data as a repository for all the build parameters really enables Plexus to uh, virtually analyze um, the builds in the conditions that they are, um, should we need to do anything in the field or represent or re recreate the, the build of the products. Um, so those are probably three things, Matt, that I would see. I, I would also, you know, as we go forward and, and look at this, I think one thing I always keep in the back of my, my mind as we look to embrace technology and, and engineering is it's important to remember to have a, you know, a strong business strategy as a, a foundation and use that to determine your future state and then enabling technology to enhance it and uh, you know don't you know let the technology alone drive your future state or strategy i think all these things we're talking about needs to play a key role in your overall business strategy and how you differentiate and show value to your customers excellent scott and thank you i think you make some really really good observations first of all who would have thought 10 years later when you and i were sitting around the board table 10 years ago that we would be talking about things like digital twins um, on a webinar today. So incredible technology, Scott's comments on interoperability, on robotics and automation. And I think he makes a great point about making sure that as we push technology into our manufacturing plants, we're not just doing it for technology's sake, but we're doing it because it has a greater purpose, because it's driving out costs, because it's improving quality, it's improving safety, what have you. So some great observations from my friend, Scott Tooney, by the way, Scott, I know Jim Wall would want me to thank you uh, for the service on the part of your team members as he created and his team helped create the competencies for the SACA certifications. I know your group was intimately involved and we certainly thank you for that. Moving on to our next guest. Uh, this is a gentleman who actually had a conflict this week and was kind enough to pre-record his response with us. Andy Martin is a great guy, senior director of manufacturing for a company many of you are familiar with, a company called Generac, founded all the way back in 1959, huge manufacturer of home standby generators, light towers, trailer mounted generators, and so on. I had the opportunity to uh, tour one of Andy's plants about two or three weeks ago. Incredible, the amount of automation, the amount of control systems, of data acquisition, data analysis that is taking place in their manufacturing environment as they transform their business to an industry 4.0 world. I know I've known Andy for a number of years. He and I are actually both Milwaukee Business Journal 40 under 40 alums. And if you know how old I am now, that goes back a little ways. Um, but uh, a great partner, a uh, great supporter of SACA. Andy has served on several of the technical work groups. And we asked Andy this question. We, we said, you, he's been a key member of those work groups, as we suggested. And we asked him, what are the, the benefits to Generac of investments, not just in SACA, but in industry 4.0 technology within their plant. 
Uh, my colleague, Melissa Martin, interviewed him. You'll see her picture show up here on the next video as well. But here's what Andy had to tell us. Um, so over the years, Generac's seen uh, you know, a lot of growth, um, especially over the last couple of years. Um, the growth has really been unforeseen. So as we look at adding capability and capacity to our facilities, um, we've been looking at automation for, for many reasons. Um, so some is the growth, um, some is also with the um, challenging uh, workforce these days and the ability to find people. Um, we're looking at automation to you know, help us um, you know, get more out with um, you know, maybe more efficient processes. And then we can tie safety and, and quality in that as well. So we're looking to, um, with the higher volumes, looking at how we make safer processes through automation, um, as well as improving the quality of our product. So as most of you know, as you implement automation, you tend to find all the variation in your parts and, and processes and products. So we're looking as we implement automation as that opportunity um, to improve the quality of our products as well. So my friend, Andy Martin, with some great observations and how Industry 4.0 Technology is transforming the way that his company, Generac, manufactures its products. And we really appreciate Andy's participation, not just in our webinar today, but certainly on the technical work groups defining competencies for SACA. And moving on to our next guest, uh, another really, really great friend, great manufacturing mind. Uh, my friend, Michael DeBru, uh, spent plenty of time on the SACA technical work groups. Michael is the senior mechanical and automation engineer and engineering supervisor for Greenhack Fan Corporation. Michael, great to have you on board. Yeah, thanks for having me, glad to be here. We are really excited to have you here as well. For those of you that don't know Greenhack, another great Wisconsin employer, uh, headquartered up in Schofield, Wisconsin. If you don't know Schofield, maybe you know Wausau, but they are kind of the entrance, the entryway to the Northwoods in Northern Wisconsin. Uh, if you don't know their products, uh, you've certainly been around them. They offer a wide range of non-residential air movement products. So think about the air duct work and the ventilation systems in hospitals, offices, hotels, shopping malls, schools, and so on. That's their company. And we're really excited to have Michael on board. He actually brought some photographs along with him that we'll, that we'll put up on the screen as he's responding to our question. But our question for you, Michael, especially since you participated extensively on these technical work groups, and not just that, you've also just launched a training program for incoming employees at GreenHack that teaches many of the same competencies that have been embedded in the SACA credentials. I'd like for you to, if you would be willing uh, to share some examples of advanced manufacturing technologies in place at GreenHack Fan Corporation. Sure, I'll hone in on one specific machine that really grabs my, uh, my mind when I think of um, you know, a cutting edge or high technology or a very critical asset in our factories. Um, so great intro to GreenHack, um, but like Matt said, we're one of the world's leading, in, uh, leading suppliers of air movement and control equipment. And I'm going to look at, um, we also have a louvers division, which is, um, we're looking at some example pictures here. Um, we just, we're kind of in a scaling mode in that we're, um, we've been opening factories um, across the U.S. and also across the globe. We now have factories in uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota. California, Kentucky, uh, North Carolina, Oklahoma, and even India and Mexico. And I, I might be forgetting a couple. Um, but that being said, we just, um, I'm going to say, duplicated a louvers factory in Shelby, North Carolina. And one of the most critical assets that or machines that I can think of in all of GreenHack, out of all of our business units, all of our brands, all of our factories, is our, we call it the SRS, and it stands for the Storage Retrieval System. So here's a couple pictures of um, the machine we just completed building in North Carolina. Uh, we turned the key on this machine um, just probably, you know, within a month ago um, to enable uh, the North Carolina factory to start making Louvers product. So what we're looking at here is, um, obviously we're seeing a very substantial um, racking system that's housing 591, um, I'll call them pallets, we sometimes refer to them as coffins, um, that each one of them, uh, we store about 159 unique extrusions among those 591 coffins of um, aluminum extruded material. And what this machine does is that blue cart with the American flag uh, in the, on the left there that goes to a certain um, coffin location, 
and it peels it out of the racking system, brings it to one of seven saw conveyor stations, which you can kind of see on the right side picture there. Um, this was in the middle of our build, but all those conveyors on the bottom side with the yellow guarding sheet metal, uh, those are all the saw conveyors going to automated saw cutting stations. So what makes SACA important to GreenHack is that, you know, time is a very, um, a critical space. You know, the Amazon uh, has shown us that companies, um, time is a space where companies can either win or lose or gain market share. Um, so when we're, when we're trying to be strategic and offer our customer base, um, you know, we call it quick builds or, um, or fast pass products that we have optimized manufacturing methods for that we're trying to ship product from order within three days while also handling our everyday volume, um, time is extremely critical. So what makes Saka important to us is that we need to make sure that we are getting personnel and new talent into our company that speaks modern manufacturing languages and is familiar with industry 4.0 fundamentals because at the end of the day, that's, that's what we're really standing on the gas pedal and getting to right now is the next level of remote visibility, reporting, real-time decision-making. And that's my selfish opinion is what Industry 4.0 is all about. Um, so that's why SACA is important to us. And that's why I've participated in all those meetings that uh, Matt kind of described. Also in inclement weather, I might add. I think, we, I think some more should be in a Fort Lauderdale, maybe in a Jim's... Uh, living room next time but um, <laughs> i think but that's... No, it's, it's been great and i'm glad to participate um but yeah i would say this is probably one of our most critical machines to um, a factory if this goes down um the factory gets starved pretty quickly so we have to make sure we have maintenance personnel operations personnel that are all um you know watered with information and skills and knowledge when they come into green tech because they're operating very critical equipment and what a great example, Michael. I mean, great comments. And just, you know, to look at these pictures and see the advanced technology you're using really shows how Industry 4.0 technology touches uh, manufacturing, supply chain, inventory, really across the whole spectrum. And really appreciate your participation in the SACA technical work groups. And, and, and I think the really acute and interesting comments about why it's so important to you and to Green Heck Fan. And, and yes, I do remember distinctly uh, standing at the top of the Rockwell Automation Clock Tower alongside you in a blizzard. We were kind of hoping yep, to see that beautiful that. view. Compliments to Michael Cook, who will join us in just a little bit. Um, so I think your idea is perfect. The next SACA technical work group, all expense paid trips to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, to spend time with Jim Wall. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Yep. And it's been see you there. just a pleasure working with you. And I appreciate you having, and appreciate having you on today. Uh, our next guest, uh, another great Wisconsin employer with some really interesting um, observations on Industry 4.0 from maybe a little bit different angle. As you can see from the screen, Jim Walter is the IT manager for Smart Factory Deployment. How cool is that title um, for Cole, or company? And Jim, really good to have you on board today. Yeah, happy to be here. Thank you for being here and thank you for joining us. So uh, most of us know Kohler. Uh, you know it for its plumbing products. Uh, you have it in your kitchen, in your bathrooms, very likely, uh, and elsewhere. But they also manufacture furniture, uh, cabinetry, tile, engines, generators. They're involved in a wide variety of business ventures. And their roots in Wisconsin, for those of you who don't know this, go all the way back to 1873. So one of the very first manufacturing companies here in the state of Wisconsin, a great Wisconsin company. And in as much as Jim uh, sees IT and OT technology in the world of smart factory and industry 4.0, I'd like Jim to pose this question to you. You've participated in the SACA technical work groups. You have, as we suggest, a really unique perspective uh, on industry 4.0, seeing it as some of us don't necessarily have a chance to from the IT side. Uh, you've also invested in training your IT team on operations technology, which was a really fun initiative to work with you on. How do you see the worlds of IT and OT converging now and in the future, Jim? Yeah, so as Matt mentioned, I'm kind of the sore thumb that I stick <laughs> out today because I'm the IT guy and I'm you know, amongst a bunch of manufacturing people. But um, back in July, they formed um, the Smart Factory Deployment Team, who I'm fortunate to be the manager for. And I had come from a career of IT, so um, old school IT. My, my team, uh, a lot of them came from uh, business background, but um, have been in IT a long time. So 
Um, I reached out to Matt last summer and told him what team that I'm forming and said, we're gonna have a lot more touches of OT in the future. And so I asked set, uh, for help setting up a curriculum that we called OT for IT professionals. I had my new team go through that and it was so popular that we opened it up to the rest of IT. So a lot of hardcore IT like the infrastructure and security people have taken part in the training as well. So historically, in my experience, IT and OT, we very seldom interacted. Um, we were so busy standing up ERP systems that we didn't reach out to the shop floor very often. Our infrastructure guys were worried about the data center and the desktops to keep running and stuff like that. Um, meanwhile, the OT guys worried about keeping the plant floor running to, and they didn't spend time worrying about us. Um, I4O is forcing us um, not even encouraging us, but forcing us to break down those silos and start to learn to work together. And the first step in that was for us to start to um, speak OT's language. And that was the training that um, we forced our people to go through or encourage your people to go, should, shouldn't say forced. <laughs> um, IT is really good at some stuff like governance and security and things like that. Um, as OT starts to play a more mission critical role on the manufacturing floor. Um, we can't ignore the governance and the security aspect of OT systems anymore. And anybody that watches the news and doesn't think OT security is important just isn't paying attention. Um, you think of two circles with one being IT and one being OT. As OT systems start to become more IT-like, they shift one direction. And as IT systems start to have products that um, are more interest to the shop floor, we start to shift that circle. So now we have a Venn diagram. Um, there's overlap now. I expect that overlap to continue. Um, one time I read a quote that said, um, today there's OT and tomorrow and there's IT and tomorrow there'll be just BT. And I think that's really where we're headed is that um, there's not going to be a distinction anymore. Fantastic. And what a great observation on a number of different levels, Jim, you know, certainly from your IT standpoint, I would call you anything but a, a sore thumb. I would say you're a breath of fresh air, um, you know, viewing OT from the IT side and, and really your examples of how you're preparing your workforce on the IT side for this convergence. So very, very important. Um, and I think your reference to that training that you're doing in, in a lot of ways is a perfect segue to kind of our next phase of our webinar today, uh, moving from this whole idea of industry 4.0 technology and how it's manifesting itself across the supply chain into some more detailed discussions about how we prepare the workforce. Now, our next guest uh, wasn't able to join us live today. Uh, her name is Ann Troka. She's a name that's known very, very, very well to a number of folks across the state of Wisconsin. Uh, and Ann was kind enough also to spend some time with us earlier this week recording her responses to our questions. Uh, for those of you who don't know Sargento, Sargento Foods, uh, under the current leadership, now the third generation of leaders of that company, they manufacture and market shredded cheese, sliced cheese, snack cheese, as well as ingredients and sausage. I'm sorry, sausage, sauces. Um, they've been a great partner to education uh, in the state of Wisconsin. Anne and the team at Sargento, by the way, were the winners of the Northeast Wisconsin Manufacturing Alliance 2020 Excellence in Manufacturing and K-12 Partnership Leadership Award. And I was, I'm proud to say that the organization that, uh, that nominated them for that award is our company, ATS Lab Midwest. So obviously we think a tremendous amount of Anne and her team. So uh, one of the things that Anne has been involved with among many is this whole program she calls Manufacturing 4.0. And it is a consortium of four industrial slash production employers, four school districts to inspire young people around careers in manufacturing and advanced manufacturing and industry 4.0. And just as important, give them the skills necessary to be successful when they get here, when they get there. So our question for Anne was really just to tell us about that program, about the opportunity for those students to earn SACA certifications and about the project itself. And here's what Anne had to say. Hello, thanks for this opportunity to share about Manufacturing 4.0. My name is Anne Troca and I'm the Community Engagement Manager at Sargento Foods. We started our work with Manufacturing 4.0 a few years ago, and we looked at what our current employees would need, but also what our future talent needs to become aware and excited about careers in manufacturing at Sargento. 
uh, we started conversations with other businesses, with education partners, and brainstorming ideas of how we could bring it to life for future talent. And one of the ideas that actually um, we started building was with four schools and four businesses got together and started building this partnership of how we could um, help students, our future workforce, connect with our businesses to really get skills that we need and skills that the students will need as well to make them employable um, in a variety of different careers because Manufacturing 4.0 is in manufacturing as well as many other industries as well. So as we started building the partnership, we worked, as I said, with four high schools, four different businesses. We also partnered with Inspire and we partnered with Lakeshore Technical College. And through those conversations, we built four different classes and we actually then uh, moved on to a fifth class. So we have Mechatronics A, Mex Mechatronics B, Industrial Controls and Robotics. And currently we're building the Internet of Things course with manufacturing, the, cr the cross function of manufacturing and IT. The first four classes are really giving students skills that our current employees, that we're working on upskilling our current employees as well because so much of our manufacturing environment is becoming much more automated. So we'll need people, but the people won't do the repetitive or heavy work. They'll be doing more of the complex work, um, which the robots will do the heavy and repetitive work. And then our people will be working with automation and technology and artificial intelligence. And as they do that, we wanted to give them the skills that they need through these four classes. And looking at it, we also had one of our team members, Bruce Wisniewski, who sat on the SACA certification committee. And we realized through conversations with LTC that the four classes that we're building for high school, we can eventually roll each of them to become um, certified classes where students can take the SACA certification um, and have that, that they can put that on their resume when they're applying for jobs. Um, we're still building the different opportunities for students that those certifications will be used for, but it will definitely give them the skills that we need um, in our future talent, as well as the skills we're using with our current employees to upskill them for roles that they have in Manufacturing 4.0. So to bring the program to life, we did think about how it would look in a high school setting. And we worked together, the eight partners, um, and we built a curriculum uh, for each of the four classes. Then we partnered together and pooled resources and also applied for grants through the state of Wisconsin and we were able to purchase the equipment in each of the buildings and also use equipment to rotate among the four different partners to the different buildings. In addition, we worked in a classroom guest visit from each of our four companies and on, also an on-site career visit. Lastly, we connected the courses to full-time employment opportunities and entry-level positions that required a high school diploma and 18 years old. So we really connected with the students to show them um, you know, who our employees were by coming into their classroom. This year due to the pandemic, we did it virtually, but we hope in the next school year we can do that on site and in person. The equipment that they're touching really shows them um, the skills that they're gonna need and the technology they'll, they'll be using. And then when they come on site to visit our company, they actually see that equipment much larger scale and how it's used in the real world. And then again, we connect them to people in positions such as production utility, what that role, what that position looks like, um, what our employees, you know, what they're excited about within that career path. So those students can get excited about their future as well. And then if they choose to go on to technical college or university, we also stay in touch with them throughout the program. We call them mentor circles. And as the students going on for their continuing education, hopefully they'll stay connected to their mentor. And then we can connect them at the right time for the student and at the right time for Sargento. We're really connecting education to success. So some great observations by our dear friend, Ann Troca. That program, Manufacturing 4.0, is really, in, in many ways, just a great example of how we can create consortiums between private enterprise, between our educators, all for the benefit of our students, all for the benefit of securing the American dream for the next generation of STEM and manufacturing talent. So we certainly appreciate Ann's participation uh, in that program and her participation in our webinar today. As you can tell, she and her team are huge supporters of the SACA initiative as well, as is our next guest, uh, somebody that I've had the pleasure of working with over the course of the last year. He actually came over to Ashley Furniture from Boeing um, on this whole 
topic of really, really cool titles. Um, I think you're right in there in the mix, uh, looking for the coolest title. Anthony Ebio, Director of Industry 4.0 Learning at Ashley Furniture. Really great to have you with us on Webinar Wednesday. Yeah, appreciate you having me. And we are so looking forward to your comments on the question that we have for you, just to introduce your company. And, and as Anthony knows, I've worked closely on a number of initiatives with Ashley Furniture over the course of the last several years. Many of us uh, knew and many of you might know Ashley for its retail presence. But in addition to all those retail stores, they're actually the largest manufacturer of furniture anywhere in the world, employing some 30,000 people. Their founder and chairman, Ron Wanick, and their CEO, Todd Wanick, have become really good friends of mine. Both recently appeared on our podcast, by the way, the Tech Ed Podcast. They have invested millions and millions of dollars into their local high schools and in the training of their own workforce. So, Anthony, my question for you is this. You've been involved and Ashley has been involved with SACA literally from its very inception. High school students taking classes on your mobile skills lab earn SACA credentials, and you've now opened two advanced manufacturing, advanced technology maker centers where your team members gain important competencies in industry 4.0 technologies. Tell our audience about your investment in your current team members, those incumbent workers at Ashley that are working through this curriculum to learn industry 4.0. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. And, um, you know, one of the things you, you mentioned an investment, um, you know, recently we, we released that, you know, Ashley Furniture had, uh, you know, reinvested a billion dollars into the company uh, with one of those key focus areas um, around talent and the future workforce. Uh, you know, like many of the people that mentioned on the phone, you know, uh, it, it, we're having a hard time keeping pace with either the customer demand or just the change in technology. Um, uh, and you know, you had mentioned some of the partnerships we have with uh, with the high schools uh, to build that external pipeline. Um, you know, but it's not. Uh, you know, we're just not cranking out the learning and the students fast enough, right? And so one of the things that we're working on is, uh, you know, uh, posturing our internal, our incumbent workers, uh, you know, to fill those future roles. Um, and so we had to really focus on developing our internal workforce, um, you know, to really, uh, you know, get them prepared for industry 4.0. And one of the things we found is we, you know, we don't want to just go in there and start teaching everybody IOT or, uh, you know, the interconnectivity and making sure that we are pacing the learning uh, and pacing the, the development of the workforce kind of to what, uh, you know, Scott had mentioned, making sure we're aligned to the business um, uh, and making sure that they're ready for it, right? And so we found ourselves you know, uh, uh, leveraging a lot of the SACA uh, structure to make sure that we have not only the things that support industry 4.0, but all the way back to 2.0, because there's still some processes depending on the site or location that just because the product we make, it's gonna be pretty manual and the standard assembly line. Um, you know, we have some, uh, you know, of our internal training programs, such as uh, manufacturing core training, um, you know, operator certification programs, as well as targeted maintenance technician training, uh, all of which is very similar and aligned to SACA uh, and so it's just one of those things where it's it's very refreshing to see that you know you have uh, you know these uh, institutions and um, uh, you know alliances that are, are aligned to what we're actually using and needing. Um, and then and like SACA, all of those programs you know are connected, uh, and they also provide that clear path for you know career development and you know a clear path for employees to retool in preparation for industry 4.0. I think everybody can you know share in that same sentiment that there is a lot of concern about okay, well, technology is going to, you know, replace my job, but it's really just going to create different types of jobs and being very transparent and showing that career path um, and mirroring those learning paths, you know, to industry 4.0 with career development opportunities. And so that's one of the things that, you know, partnering with Saka and yourself, Matt, and a lot of the industry leaders is making sure that, you know, we're very deliberate about how we partner with external schools, how we partner with, uh, you know, a, a, a you know, industry leaders like yourselves, just to make all that happen and all of us to be successful on the on the end of this. Thank you, Anthony. And I love your characterization around um, Industry 4.0. Yes, displacing some careers, but creating a lot of really, really cool new ones. And, and yeah. your commitment and the commitment on the part of your company to prepare those incumbent workers for that changing technology is certainly to be commended, as is your support of SACA and your continued leadership at Ashley Furniture. So thank you so much, for joining us. Um, our next guest is another great partner, somebody that I've gotten to know really well the last several years, a gentleman for whom I have really a great deal of respect. Ken Evans is the Associate Maintenance Manager for SC Johnson. Ken, great, great to have you on today. Thank you, Matt. 
appreciate you being here. I want to introduce SC Johnson. A number of our of our attendees probably are familiar with with your company and your brands. But let's face it: if you if you've used Pledge, Glade, Off, Mister Muscle, Ziploc, Windex, and who among us can't include at least one, if not multiple, brands like that um, among the products that we're using on a regular basis? If you're using those products and others, you are a customer of SC Johnson. It is a family-owned company headquartered in Racine, Wisconsin, and it's been an amazing Wisconsin employer for over 130 years. And when I say amazing employer, I'm not just saying that as just one example of SC Johnson's incredible commitment to education. Earlier this year, that company announced a $5.5 million investment in their local technical College, Gateway Technical College, to provide career pathways to STEM for individuals in underserved populations. So just one great example, Ken, of your company's incredible commitment to education and to technology. My question for you is this. Um, SC Johnson's deployed an extensive incumbent employee training program that includes the opportunity to earn SACA credentials. And I would love for you to tell our audience about that program. Yeah, we, we went through a few generations of figuring out what, what's needed for our employees um, and really understanding um, what do we want for the employees coming in and where our current employees are at um, currently and how to upskill our current employees. We uh, deployed an assessment, um, an internal assessment to determine um, where the skills our employees are. There's one where you think you're at and then there's reality of where you're, where you're really at. Um, so uh, we implemented that and, and then we built a curriculum with Gateway and with, with using the SACA format to, to build a curriculum to, to send our employees to school either online or on the Gateway campus. So it, it's, it's, it's a dual path for employees. Um, some employees want a, a degree and, and they can go that route and some just want to learn and just want the skill. So we work uh, diligently um, with Gateway and, and Lab Midwest to develop that curriculum. And what we found out is the, the excitement from the employees. We anticipated the younger employees would be excited to learn because also there's a, a payoff, you know, from skills that you, you earn. But what we also um, were surprised that the uh, more senior employees were excited to learn and, and excited about the new technology. Um, about Seven years ago, our company made a commitment <clears throat> to um, up, upgrade our technology so that we are more current and we can respond faster and we can get the data collection we need to better maintain our equipment. Um, so that, that coming from the top down really got our employees excited about that. So right now we have about 70 to 75 of our technicians enrolled, actively enrolled in some type of technical training. Um, we're also are looking at, um, so we're starting a 4.0, <clears throat> industry 4.0 platform. We have some initial meetings in one of our departments to determine what equipment to buy to plan for the future. We have some obsolescence, but we're, as we plan and we work with engineering, the question is, what is the future going to look like and how do we plan and what skills do our employees need to get there and to help us um, in the future? So we, we are really excited about it. And I'm excited about the, the, the path that we're going. I'm excited about the excitement of the students and that they're engaged. Um, they're disappointed if they didn't make a class or if the class was too full. Um, so we're really doing everything we can to provide them the tools that they need to be successful so that the company obviously in turn can be successful. Um, it's been a great partnership with Gateway, a great partnership with Latin and West. Um, the SACA format, they're really excited because it gives them increments in the SACA um, platform to show success along the way. A lot of times when you're in an associate program, associate degree program, you, you got to wait till you get to the degree to get some recognition. Under SACA, they can get incremental steps of, of recognition and, and be proud of it. And, and we're proud of them too. Well, and we're so enthusiastic for that excitement around and on the part of your employees, Ken, especially as you suggest, some of those more seasoned employees still recognize that as industry 4.0 advances, as manufacturing technology advances, it's so very important for them to make sure that their skills remain sharp. 
uh, you know, so thank you certainly for all those kind words. Thank you for your leadership. Um, and thank you for everything that you have taught us. And I mean, all of us about incumbent worker training, you have a tremendous background and a tremendous commitment to SC Johnson and to your people. And I really, really appreciate you being with us today. Our final industry uh, subject matter expert before we turn a little bit of the discussion over to my dear friend, Jim Wall is Michael Cook. Uh, Michael's got another great title, Director of Global <laughs> Academic Partnerships. Uh, Michael, I put this background picture on there on purpose. That is a gift that Michael gave me about two years ago. I always wanted my own uh, wooden um, Allen Bradley clock tower. That is something that, that Rockwell Automation uh, gives, to its, gives to its partners as a recognition of, of their commitment to its brand. I was so proud to be given that. Uh, and I know Michael will remember the day that, that he handed that to me um, at the clock tower. Um, so, Michael, so great to have you on board. Thank you, Matt. I really appreciate being here. Yeah, we appreciate you being here as well. I owe my Michael, my Michael introduction, my introduction to Michael, to our great friends at Fanix several years ago. Uh, so um, they're also a huge advocate for, for SACA. Fanic, of course, the largest robotics and CNC company in the world. So grateful to my friends Mike Chico and Paul Aiello and others for putting us together uh, with Michael because we've learned so much from Michael Cook these last several years. Uh, now, as Michael knows, I have a soft spot in my heart for Rockwell Automation. Um, I actually had the opportunity to serve as CEO of a Rockwell spinoff for about 10 years. Uh, and Michael and his team are having a huge impact on technical education, uh, not just in Wisconsin, but across the United States and really in a lot of ways around the globe. So my question for you, Michael, is this. In so many ways, Rockwell Automation is helping to lead the Industry 4.0 revolution uh, around the entire globe, across the planet. And as part of that leadership, your company recently signed on as a platinum sponsor of the Smart Automation Certification Alliance. What is it, Michael, about Saka's model that was so very attractive to Rockwell Automation? Well, um, thanks, Matt. I think at the outset, you know, uh, our sponsorship has, has just been validated by everything I've heard uh, <laughs> to this point. I'm really honored, and I think it validates our, our approach. And I think what's really happening is with Industry 4.0, so many companies are grappling with just understanding where they are with their own digital transformation journeys. You know, and as we see the proliferation of Ethernet IP, really being able to connect this IT OT integration piece, we heard a little bit about systems integration. Companies are starting to get uh, a, high, a heightened awareness of the new risks of adopting these new technologies. And really at the heart of that is, you know, what enables that is not just the technology, it's the people. And, and so when you think of the talent side and the academic side, we've really been trying to work to bring the connected enterprise to life for students, such as the Connected Systems Institute. But a key part of what's really been missing is that common language of Industry 4.0 workforce standards. You know, that, that's the key, key enabler to really support these talent roadmaps and, and the pathways and to create clarity around that. Uh, for, for workforce. So when we think of how we um, you know, really engage with SACA and, and what SACA means, you know, SACA has been really working closely to develop those standards from the fundamental levels right up to the more integrated systems levels as you kind of start to integrate these new technologies around the Industry 4.0 pillars. So you think with system integration, we're thinking automation, we're thinking robotics, we're thinking analytics, we're thinking AI and, uh, and, and looking at how these integrate and with that comes risk. And when people adopt these technologies, uh, companies are really trying to understand how to maximize their return on invest investment. I think earlier on, um, and if it was Jim or one of the speakers was talking about business strategy, and what's, what's acceptable risk? What's your business strategy and how you adopt these technologies? And then the, the key enablement is really on the people side. So, when we think about SACA, no one company can really do this alone. So we kind of in this privileged company uh, with common interests and SACA is really that for us is that primary credentialing nonprofit body that's focused on this effort in this way. Um, I think it's really uh, providing significant leadership here. Um, the, just the general process and we've heard before about the technical work groups and creating that um, you know, ensuring that there's a close fidelity between the academic space as well as what's, what we find relevant in industry, that alignment is, is a significant part of what I think soccer brings 
And then at the same time, really thinking about setting standards that we can build on as we go forward. And we see new technologies coming into this being integrated um, that can be referenced back in these talent roadmaps to enable the technology to be successful. And I think um, you mentioned at the outset, you know, the assessments, you know, access to certifications and credentials in this way um, at, at, at very, very low cost makes it accessible. And I think for us as industry, we have to start to rethink, you know, how can we, how can we really assist with access to technical education? We're trying to drive an increased diversity in the pipeline. We're trying to low entry barriers. And if you really put this into context, you know, if we accept the reality that there are around 2.8 million jobs that, that are going unfold, or we think are gonna be unfold in advanced manufacturing, and we're already trying to upskill, um, we need to think differently about impact. And you know, the quality and how we can scale with a common language of industry 4.0 workforce standards, that needs to be consistent. And, and we almost gotta treat this like an engineering design project. We actually have to have a process and a roadmap and I think soccer brings all that together for us. And you know, what's really neat, and I, I, some of the speakers had mentioned this as well, but you know, the, the pathways really fit with modern education systems. And they also fit very closely with employers from a learning and development pathways perspective as well. So for us, I think it's just a natural to be a platinum sponsor of soccer. And you know, we're honored to be in the company of other manufacturers that along with us can contribute to development of those standards and then have the significant impact on manufacturing competitiveness in the US. You know, I think it's uh, definitely the right approach. And I think for education, it's got, this is gonna be very impactful. And yeah, we're really pleased to be a part of soccer. Without question, and I know on behalf of, of Jim Wall, he, uh, how pleased that he is and that soccer is uh, for your partnership and your support and that of Rockwell Automation, Michael, just some great comments around the importance of assessments, yeah. the importance of um, of having a flexible system. I love the reference to engineering design in terms of how the SACA certifications have been put together uh, because there has been just tremendous thought and tremendous yeah. uh, precision in terms of how Jim has done these. And so Jim, turning to Jim Wall, and we've got just a, a few minutes before the top of the hour, we are right on schedule. Um, I wanna introduce to our audience uh, the gentleman who's really in so many ways responsible for the movement of the Smart Automation Certification Alliance across the country and across the globe, somebody that had tremendous vision several years ago in putting this organization together. Uh, Jim Wall is the executive director of the Smart Automation Certification Alliance. I've worked side by side with Jim for three years now. I serve on his national board. I'm honored to do so. Jim, first of all, welcome to Webinar Wednesday, and I want to close out our time together uh, with our audience today with this question for you. Uh, we've heard from some of the most recognizable manufacturers in the state of Wisconsin, some might say on the entire planet. And much of what we've heard today absolutely validates your vision in creating the Smart Automation Certification Alliance. Tell our audience about that vision and maybe if you just have a minute or so to tell us about what's on the near horizon for SACA. Well, thank you, Matt. I, I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here today. And uh, clearly, the, the vision uh, from the beginning was to develop a system that's based on industry-developed, industry-validated standards that clearly uh, define uh, the competencies, performance indicators, and knowledge indicators that are required of individuals to succeed in, in the world of Industry 4.0. And uh, um, we also had a vision that the system needed to be very modular and flexible. There, there, there's uh, so many variables uh, in, in the, the, the world that uh, having a system that, that is flexible and uh, uh, provide a lot of opportunities for individuals, not only in industry, but in education to have pathways uh, that could be very different from one another, but still be part of uh, this whole international standards that have been developed around Industry 4.0. And, and uh, you know, we're really excited uh, that every day we're, we're uh, having uh, Zoom meetings with, with organizations uh, certainly around the country and, and around the world that, that are uh, looking to use these credentials and micro-credentials in a little bit different way. Uh, but that fits their needs, uh, but they're still part of, of, of a same standardized system, and, and we're, we're really, really excited about that. Some things that are happening in, in the very near future, um, 
we're set to launch the, the piloting of the Automation System Specialist II uh, certification assessments. Um, that would be for the more senior uh, automation technician. And, and also next week, we're launching the development of a, a process instrumentation control standards uh, group. And uh, uh, thanks to Michael Cook, uh, who introduced us to uh, 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 Endress Hauser, one of the world's uh, most renowned uh, instrumentation uh, technology companies. They have agreed to, to work with us to uh, pull together a technical work group of experts uh, to, to begin the development of uh, standards that will be the basis for a certification strand for the process instrumentation and control uh, industry. So we're really excited about those, those two uh, initiatives that are, are launching within the, the next few weeks. Perfect, Jim, and we're excited for that and all the other great things to come for SACA. I want to thank you personally for your leadership, for all the great work you're doing on behalf of our students and our, of our incumbent employees across the United States and, and, and the globe as well, and certainly for all the industrial employers that are clearly seeing a benefit from your very, very dedicated and hard work. To those industrial employers, all of them that gathered with us today, thank you so much for spending some time here on Webinar Wednesday, sharing with our audience all the great things that you're doing, your commitment to the Smart Automation Certification Alliance, to your incumbent workers, to the future of American manufacturing, and certainly to our audience as well. Thank you so much for being with us on behalf of Webinar Wednesday, on behalf of our producer, Melissa Martin. My name is Matt Kirkner. We're here every Wednesday at 2 o'clock to share best practices in technical education. We'll see you next week.